Okay, this is the fourth video in this series and we're making this little character here and we're up to the point now where we've done the head and we've done a block out of the body. We're about to do some sculpting on the base and the core parts of the body. So let's dive right in. So this video is going to start off with just the base. Let's just work on the base and see how far we get. So I'll hit solo at the bottom and we've got the cylinder from the last video. We're going to come up here to trim and trim is going to chip things off for us. So we're going to go to line and that means we can just literally start chipping away. Hit view if you want to move again and then back to line. Now we're making this little bit of vol volcanic rock here. So we don't want symmetry on, as you've just seen that I had it on, and I'm just chipping away at these edges from this angle, because what we don't want in a rock is any of these um, rounded edges. So I'm going to move round, and I'm going to just keep going back from line to view, and that means I can keep doing these kind of like little faceted cuts like this. Back to view, come around like this. Just keep going until I've really chipped away at a lot of the, 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 the rounded bits. Like so, keep going, do a bit more around here. A bit more on this side, like so. And that's probably enough for now. So that's a great way of starting off chipping away at, at your rock. The other one that we would use a lot on this particular part of the, the project would be to use flatten. And this will just flatten off certain areas like for example on the edges so rocks always have their corners chipped off when they've been around for years they just seem to get you know smashed and um moving the light around there so that you can see it so that that, that you know they they do end up with little chips and cracks around the edges now there's one thing that's going wrong here that we can solve very quickly and that's that the resolution isn't high enough so let's hit wire and have a look now what's happened there is we used a cylinder and wherever we trimmed it away, it's used this little triangulation or, or tessellation effect. So we need more geometry than that. So we could subdivide it, which would be up here. Let's find the right panel. In multi res we could hit subdivide, but this is a great opportunity to use voxel remeshing. So let's do it at about under 200 and just remesh. And now you can see it's just given us a nice clean mesh all the way around. And we can keep doing that as we do a little bit, so let's use flatten again like this. And down here, we can just carry on using voxel, which will remesh each bit that we do. Voxel, you can see me doing it. So if we turn wire off now and watch what's happening, you can see there and then voxel, that will mean that I'm always using, the, I'm always on a really nice um, uh, remeshed part of the model. So let's carry on. If you can't see it with the light, then just keep moving the light around. Um, like so, and then we've got once we've got enough just you know cleaned up. You can do this really quickly. Um, we will clean this up at a later stage, but you know at the moment it, it, this is more than enough. So now this is an, an, a nice thing to do. We want to put some big hero cracks into it. So let's unsolo it so we can see where the front is. So that's here, and we'll move that light round a bit for now. Now instead of sculpting on it, a good tip that you can do is use masking. So what you can do is you can draw some masks on it like so. So I'm going to think about where the cracks are now. I'm just going to draw some. So I'm literally just using mask and I'm very, very erratically just drawing these lines. So you can use full intensity and small size. You, know, you don't want it too jaggy like I've got it there. So maybe that's a bit too small. And keep moving it around until we get a nice spread of these these you know volcanic cracks. Now we know where the front is. You can go back to solo if you want. And let's go back underneath with these, like so. And these are like the cracks that run through uh, volcanic rock. Um, so you, you can vary the size. You can open them up. Let's come around the back here, and we'll do some zigzags. Get some reference if you feel like you want to, you know, if, if, if this would be better for you, you, you know, using reference um, or use the image that I've given you from the resource hub just to match ours a little bit. Um, and see it coming down here, down the side. And now we know we need some over this side. So we've got a big, big one in the middle. So if we zigzag from that 
I'm not planning this. I'm just literally just going, you know, with the flow to see where it's almost like lightning. It's just wherever it, it, it it's following the, the, the rock that I've already kind of pre-made. Um, like so, let's just get going around here. And then we'll just meet some of these underneath. This bit underneath doesn't really matter, um, but it might show on the edges a little bit later on. So there's no harm in doing it. Now that's masked now. So in fact, I'll just do a little bit more there. When you carry on like I'm doing there, that's called noodling. Um, and CG artists do this a lot. So it, we, we find it very hard to stop and just get on with what we're supposed to be doing. So there you go. So let's call that done. Now I need the mask on the other part of the model. So if you hold down mask and tap, it inverts it. So remember that it's hold mask, tap off the model and it inverts it. If you tapped on the model, you would get this effect, which is a blur. Now, as it happens, that's not too bad anyway. So now it's masked. Now we go gizmo and we scale that down. And what that does now is it brings the unmasked areas in and that instantly gives you some nice cracks. Now, let's go back and just show you what happens if I unblur it. So this is where, if you remember, I just blurred it. Now, if I did it without that blur, you're going to get much harsher edges like so. And that might give you too much, um, you know, a bit too much, um, like the, this jaggedy surface, which we, we probably don't want. So that's why that little bit of a, a tap on there, just to blur it a bit, that would definitely give us, a, you know, an effect that we, we could use. And because the pivot point is in the center of this rock, it's dragging everything towards the center, which generally speaking, for this kind of project works really, really well. Now, I wouldn't suggest doing any painting at this early stage apart from one thing. So I'm going to say if we paint now, so we go paint tool and just go all the way red and now paint. The reason I'm doing this now is because it's already masked and it's a great time to get that lava in. So you, it's a bit of an economy, really, that will save us doing this later on. Even if we change the model significantly, at least this instantly uses that mask to give us that effect. So you can even throw in a bit of orangey yellow as well, if that helps. So um, use a lower intensity there. And that just gives us a start of where the and a bit of a feeling really of where where the lava is going to be. You can of course smooth it, and if you smooth it, it will blur it. So that's quite useful. So just smooth off some of those jaggies there, and then clear the mask. Just strike up, and there you go. There's there's your lava. Uh, and later on, we're going to add some rock textures to that. But um, at the moment, that will be more than enough. So let's just hit solo, and now we're back with our character like so so the next thing we want to do is just in this particular video we're going to do a little bit more sculpting on the body because we've only got a rough block out at the minute so tap on the body again if you want to set on outline up here that allows you to be really clear on what part of the body you're working on go to clay and let's adjust this graph so we, we want to do some nice flat sculpting so we use our flat table and if we want it harsh we could, we could delete this one, tap on it and delete. If you want to use a preset one, there's loads in there, but I like to use when I'm doing what I'm about to do, which is really good harsh sculpting, is custom and a low table like this. Then come up to it and we're just gonna do one stroke and this will give us our, let's just go around here, this will give us the, the basis of where our collar is going to be. So a little bit bigger. You can see it's just affecting it a tiny bit. All I'm trying to do here is just mark out where this is going to go, really. So um, it's just giving us the, the 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 lineup. You could actually use crease, which would do the same thing. And it just tells me wh where I'm going to be sculpting up to in a moment once I, once I start the main sculpting. So hit solo now and you can see roughly what that's done for us. It's given us a little bit... Um, basically giving us a line if you want to at this stage you can switch back to matcap and matcap will just give us that little bit more of um, uh, a, a better look at the sculpting if, if it's too dark you, you know it's it, it does seem a little bit dark in there so pick a light one 
so and make sure that that's round at the front like that and that's like back to being in our clay like we were for the very early parts of this model so hit wire so we can have a look at it now look what's happening here this is stretching this model already which we, we know how to fix this because we've done it a few times already so come up to voxel remesh under 200 remesh and there you go we've got a nice mesh to sculpt on so and now we know where that line is now for the collar and bear in mind the collars here. We're now going to start sculpting up a, a, a much more defined collar. So I'm just using the basic clay tool. And it's going to be a collar and a hood around the back here like this. So let's just build him up. And if you've got to the point where you've built it up enough, you can just hit voxel. Now, again, you won't see what happens unless you have wire on. But you know that I'm voxel remeshing that at that point. So now it's smooth, paint up, paint up, paint up, smooth. And just get into the habit of that, which is a little bit of painting or sculpting, like so. So this is the shoulder. This is where the the um, the, the collar is going to come round like this and then smooth it down. Let's smooth down the body with a bigger brush. Body doesn't need a lot at this point. Um, let's see, smooth it round here. And now we can do a little bit of sculpting again on the on the bottom part. So symmetry is still on. So this is the the bottom of the under part of his of his. his let's call it a habit. I, I was struggling in the last video for the name of of this, but it's almost like a a monk's habit, isn't it? So let's just call it his habit. Um, and it's his habit is tucking over his his little belly is here. Um, and it's coming over the top of the of the habit there, which which forms this front bit here, which is is where the the um, the cloth is all bunching together. So I'm just going to use the move tool now, and I'm going to start moving um, in and out. If you have a problem, did you see there? It seems to be moving just in one direction. That can happen where this normal button comes on, and that just basically moves it in one direction. We want to, if you've ever got a problem and it doesn't seem to be working, then turn that normal off. I'm just making it thinner and thinner and thinner around the edges, like so. I've gone too thin there. You can see I've popped through, so just be a little bit careful. And then smooth that back down, moving it right to the end, and that'll give us this kind of look here. You can see there I've moved it inside as well, so we need to be careful of that. That means that the back of the mesh is protruding through the front of the mesh and we don't want that especially if this is going to go for something like 3d printing so just using the move tool and just moving it around now if you're following this completely oops I just need to be on clay and smooth then then take this is another one of those times where you take your time let's go to crease and the areas that i've just done let's give it a little bit more of a of, of definition by using the crease tool we know this is where the neck's going to go um, up inside. doesn't matter about this bit at the top because it's going to be obscured. Under the belly, go all the way around here, like so. And that's probably enough. Let's take a look at that. So there you can see what, what that's done. That's given us that collar. Now with the move tool now, you can bring it out and kind of play with it a little bit now. And we may even want to make it bigger. Um, we've got the base, the, the basis of it, but maybe we want to use something like inflate, low intensity, and then you can see there it it puffs it up a little bit, which definitely we'll need for the back there, like so, and that will that will give us that. He's got a hood at the back, um, although you can't see it on the on the, the the painting there at the top right, but that 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 there would be a hood coming down the back like so. So that's enough on that one. When we break the symmetry, I'll show you now, but I'm not going to do it now. So at the moment it's symmetrical, I would turn the symmetry off. And when we're doing things like creases, which we'll get to later, then we creases in the in the uh, cloth, um, it would be like this. And it's a very, I'll teach you some very, very simple tips um, about clothing, about how to get pinches in cloth. Um, but that is in a later video. You can see it there just to give you an idea of where this is, is where this is going. So one last little job in this part of the video. I just need to put some volume back in these arm parts here. So let's put um, 
symmetry is back on and I'm just sculpting again. So I'm just making sure I've got enough um, geometry that, that's going to support the arms. Let's have a look at the wire. We know what's going wrong there because it needs to be voxel remeshed. So come to the top, voxel remesh. Uh, it's a little bit high, that one, but we, we won't do that again. Um, and then smooth that back down and we shouldn't have that problem again. So now I can sculpt the arm. What would be the bicep, even though you can't see it very well in, you know, inside its cloak, you should always be thinking about what's going on in, underneath. And then there will be folds down here, like so. And then I'm going to use the flatten here because it's got a little bit too much for me. So I'm just going to flatten off some of these areas. And you do see flat areas on clothing. Um, so, it, you know, we can we can explore some of that as as the character evolves. And once we get to the the, 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 the nitty gritty of this character. And then the last thing before we move on, we'll just use the move tool to bring those arms in. Let's turn off our outline again because you can see it much better like this. So I want a nice big shoulder or shoulder area. This, this would be his, if we were doing it anatomically correct, it would be his deltoid going up here. And the clothing will all start to pinch once we do that under here. And then this would come down to his elbow here. Again, there will be pinching there. And we've got geometry to support that now. And then we're going to have the the cuff of his sleeve will be going up inside like that so we'll, we'll work that out um later on but a lot of the bulk of it is done now um, and it doesn't take long to get to this sort of stage if you're following a set of rules like we've done there so that's enough for this video and then next time we'll get to some detailing and we'll also do the hands and the lightsaber I really hope you're enjoying these videos and if you are, please give us a thumbs up. It does help us to get in front of all the artists who may like this kind of content. And if you give us a thumbs up, then why not subscribe to the channel and we can let you know when we're going to um, drop new content, which is every week.